Hello, Blue Hat, Israel. Yeah. Let's start. And today I'm just setting up the stage for Marina. She will do the he technical heavy lifting. So what are we going to talk about today? Not that, not that. Yeah. So we will start with targeted attackers, TDPs, tactics, techniques, and procedures. And how do they relate to Windows authentication? We'll do it very briefly because Will and Benjamin did very, very good uh, job in explaining all these things. Then we will discuss very briefly local user authentication. And then Marina will take the stage and the technical things will start. So we will show how local user create hidden links in the attack graph if you've been to uh, Will talk. He talked a lot about the attack graph uh, and quoting John Lambert and abusing the attack graph with Bloodhound. So we will show you that local user create even more new uh, hidden links in that graph. So it's something that future Bloodhound or manual attackers can abuse. And then we will show how the whole lateral movement cycle can be implemented just by abusing local user credentials, no domain credentials. And we are not planning to leave you only with the problems. We will show you some sh solutions. So first and foremost, we will expose a new tool that we had created, Local Hero Scanner, which enables security admins to remotely monitor local user behaviors. And from afar, no agent install, no excessive pr privileges. So stay with us. And we'll talk a little bit about hardening, at least the parts that uh, were not covered uh, in previous talks. So Samaritan, group policy to deny local user authentication, uh, remote authentication, and the lab solution. And we'll have a live demo, really live demo. Uh, so stay with us because everything can go wrong. And uh, then uh, we will finish up with some outro and the key takeaway. So if you slept during one slide, don't worry. The important stuff will be again at the end. So let's start with the beginning. And this is the attack kill chain model, a very uh, popular way to describe advanced attackers. And I really like the name attack kill chain, cyber kill chain, because in just two words, it shows you both the danger and also the opportunity for defenders uh, in a cyber targeted attack. Because, well, first, kill. Cyber can really kill. For example, many believe that cyber killed Hillary Clinton's chances of uh, winning the last US election. So cyber kills. But it's also a chain. And a chain holds a promise within it because we all know that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. So if defenders can win once, detect one step within this chain, cut that, that link, then defenders win. So defenders need to win only once to win it all. So there is a lot of potential here. So what attackers are doing, let's drop the philosophical thing and go to detail. Well, the first phase is uh, infiltrate the victim uh, networks. So they come from the internet into the uh, on-premise network, for example, by sending a lot of phishing email. Eventually, someone will click that poisonous uh, attachment, and uh, the machine will get owned. Then the attackers build some kind of a map of the network, users, computers, privileges, the connection between them, everything that Bloodhound automates. Then attackers want to uh, trade up their uh, privileges because they had landed on some arbitrary machine and some arbitrary privileges. So usually not very interesting one. And so they want to trade up that privileges and become domain admin, the most uh, pri uh, privileged user in a Windows uh, network. So how do they do that? They have its credentials, use that credentials uh, to go to other machines that these credentials enable, have a small credential there, and so on and so forth until they become domain admin. But when they get there, they still haven't won because they have keys to all the doors, right? But the, st the attacker still need to get out the data they are after. So they move throughout the network, look for uh, that data, and when they find that data and exfiltrate it back to their headquarters, only then attackers win. And this is exactly 
what we are trying to stop in, with Microsoft ATA. We are trying to look on this kill chain and find as many links as possible within this chain. And remember, we only need to be successful once to uh, fall the attacker's whole kill chain. OK, so. So how attackers are moving around your network. So if you got by, by now, you're pretty much convinced that attackers are not going through walls. They're not using zero day. They're not defying physics. Now, they're going through the door. Uh, they're using credentials to get in. And Windows authentication, it's what protected door. Because Windows machines, doors are usually locked. And the lock is the authentication protocol, and the keys are, of course, the credentials. So there, it's a case of good news, bad news thing, because the good news, there are multiple locks to that door, NTLM, Kerberos, Catch Credential, Local. But the bad news is they are all in a daisy chain mode. So chain number two, again, only as strong as its weakest link. Attackers get to choose. They can break a single one. Uh, they choose which lock they want to break. So it reduces security, not increases it. And there are many, many attacks. Many of them already mentioned. Pass the hash, LNTLM, and TLM relay. Overpass the hash uh, of our friend uh, Benjamin here. Uh, against Kerberos, pass the ticket for Kerberos, skeleton key, MS1468, and remote but even for cache credentials, there are attacks, remote butler. So what happened with local user authentication? What are the attacks there? Because it's also a lock, so it, it should be a prime target for attackers, we guess. But we couldn't find too much uh, documentation about it, so we decided to shed some light on these uh, dark corners. Because local authentication is the oldest uh, Windows authentication protocol. In fact, this is very basic. In f probably the first uh, authentication on a machine would be a local one. Because when a machine is born, when the Windows is installed, there is no domain uh, or domain that the machine is aware of. So that authentication must take place locally. And the uh, credential of local accounts are stored in the local uh, SAM database, which is uh, encrypted in the registry. And the hashes, as we said, it's old. So what's the best thing to do uh, 20 years ago? MD4 password, NTLM hash, no salt. So same password, but different users and different machine. Doesn't matter. Same NT password hash. And there is. A, no key stretching applied. There is no PBKDF2, if you, if you know it. So not thousands of hash iteration. So it's very easy to compute MD4. It was made to be easy. So what about attacks against local user authentication? So hopefully after this talk, you will be very much convinced that local user security matters. And it matters not only to the local computer, but it really matters to the safety and the health of all the network. So with that, I pass the torch and the clicker to Marina. Go Thanks, ahead. Sal. So I'm going to talk about how local users fit into the cyber kill chain and in which stages of actual attacks they can be used in. So we've already seen in previous talks how attackers usually think in graphs. So they infiltrate the network by compromising some domain machine and getting the credentials of some domain account, and eventually they want to reach the credentials of a domain admin. So they move around the network trying to find the path that would allow them to do that. However, we've seen that sometimes defenders have a tendency of thinking in lists. So they have lists of assets that they're trying to protect, and this is sometimes not enough. So defenders have to be aware of any dependencies and relationships between those assets. So in order to be able to defend our network from such advanced attackers, we have to start thinking in graphs as well. So apparently thinking in graphs is not always enough. We must also be aware of any invisible links in those graphs. So what are those invisible links? This is actually what brings us to the topic of our talk. So imagine that this is the uh, graph that describes our current network. Think what happens if all domain machines have the same local admin account and password on them. So this sounds kind of far-fetched, but this is actually a very common scenario in a lot of organizations. 
It can either happen explicitly when IT wants to have some master key that they can use to connect to any domain machine at any given time, or implicitly, they just have an image they prepare in advance, and they use that image to install new domain machines. So what actually happens is in this case is that the entire SAM database, which contains all the information regarding those local users, is duplicated to all of those domain machines. So we get a lot of domain machines with the same local credentials on them. So what does it do to our graph? So now the graph becomes much simpler. Now all the computers are only one edge away from each other. So if attackers are able to compromise a single machine and get admin privileges on that machine, they're now able to move using those credentials to any other domain machine. So this is something that we definitely do, do not want in our network. So let's talk about some more invisible links that can be created using those local users. So there's actually a group policy that can define new local users on domain machines. What is this group policy? It creates new local users on machines. And as all other group policies, uh, all its information is stored in the sysvol share, which any domain user can access. So this is how the password is stored. You can see that the password is not stored in plain text. However, it is stored encrypted using an encryption key you can find online. All right, so this is not very secure. This is why uh, this group policy is actually no longer supported. It's important to say that. However, we have found a lot of environments in which there are still relics on the domain controller and those local users still exist on machines. This is just like keeping credentials on uh, the domain share such that if an attacker gets in, all he needs is some domain account, and he can get all those uh, uh, keys to access uh, different domain machines. All right, so this definitely needs to be removed from uh, any domain environment. One more very trivial yet very important uh, invisible link can be created by guest accounts. So what's a guest account? So a guest account is a an account you can log on to the machine without using a password. So as, as you can hear for yourself, it doesn't sound very safe. However, in some environments, users leave those accounts enabled, which leaves the door open for attackers to use. Great time to make fixes. All right. So uh, now we saw why we uh, looked at uh, local users, and we saw the motivation behind it. Let's dive into the details and see how those users can be used during an actual attack. So actually, those users can be used uh, starting from the moment attackers get into our network and infiltrate the initial domain machine until the moment they have domain admin credentials. So this includes the following stages. That includes local privilege escalation. So sometimes they have a domain uh, account which is not necessarily a, an admin on the current machine. How can they get those admin privileges? Well, one of the ways is to uh, local to uh, brute force through a local admin account. So once they have the credentials of a local admin, they can go ahead and compromise more credentials. So they get they can go ahead and get any valuable information from the machine, which usually includes all the hashes, the tickets, all the keys, and this includes the entire information from the same database, which includes all the password hashes of all local users. So at this stage, attackers have a few uh, credentials of local admins. They can go ahead and search for other domain machines for which those credentials can be valid. So they go ahead and perform the admin reconnaissance phase. They go ahead and query other domain machines who are the admins on this machine. So by combining the results they have from the two previous stages, they can go ahead and actually use those local credentials to remotely execute code on another machine. And if those credentials are valid, this would indeed work. So let's dive into the details and see exactly what happens in each stage. So if you lose me at any point, don't worry about it. We will see a, a demo which would hopefully even work a bit later on. So first of all, uh, attackers compromise some domain credentials. They're trying to perform some high privilege operations. For example, here we're trying to add a new local user. However, we get the error of access is denied. This is since the current account in use is not an admin on the machine. Fine, so we can go ahead and query who are the admins on this machine. 
we have enough permissions to do that. So we get the domain admins group and two uh, local admin accounts. So usually the domain admin accounts are much more managed and secured than local accounts, so attackers may prefer to initially target those local admin accounts. We can go ahead and brute force one of those uh, local admin passwords, uh, and if we succeed, uh, we can get the admin privileges on the machine. So we've actually created a small brute force tool ourselves, written in C Sharp, that accepts a local username and a list of passwords, and just to try, tries to log on to the machine using each and every one of those passwords. So if one of those calls succeeds, we display the password. One very uh, big advantage of this tool is that it does not rely on network traffic at all, since the entire authentication process of local users is done entirely locally. So we get a very high attempt rate, much higher than any tools relying on network traffic. Also, it kind of allows us to fly under the radar and avoid any uh, monitoring systems that rely on network traffic. So here we were able to guess the password of one of the local admin accounts. Great, let's say uh, attackers can now switch to the local admin context and perform any operations that require high privileges that they were not able to do using the domain account. So here we add a new local user and the operation is successfully completed. So at this stage they can do basically uh, whatever they want with this machine. So next step, gather any valuable information is stored on this machine. Usually that would be credentials, so they can eventually get to the domain admin credentials. So we extract all hashes, keys, tickets, whatever the machine has, any valuable files. And one of the, the more interesting things is that we extract all the password hashes of all the local admin users. So here we can see the hash of the built-in local administrator account that attackers may not, to, may not be able to brute force. However, we do not need the password in plain text. So it's enough to compromise any admin account to get all the password hashes. All right, so this stage we have the credentials of some local accounts on the machine. Next stage for attackers is to try to figure out for which other machines those credentials can be valid. So we go ahead and perform the admin reconnaissance phase, requiring all the other domain machines who are the admins on, your, on the, those machines. So this can be done by uh, the get net local group, for example, from uh, PowerSploy, uh, which can either enumerate all local groups on the machine or enumerate all group memberships. So usually the group uh, attackers are more in interested in is basically, of course, the administrator's local group. So this performs uh, queries to the SAM database using the SAMR protocol. And the interesting thing is that the permissions that you need to query uh, to perform those queries are of any domain user. So imagine an attacker that gets into your system by compromising some domain account, for example, by a phishing email. People still click on those. And now he's able to uh, gather very valuable information uh, about your environment. So now he knows who are the admins on each and every uh, domain machine in your network. All right, so now we have the credentials, and we know where those, where, uh, those credentials might work. Final step, let's combine those results and try to remotely execute code using the credentials of uh, one of those local users. So here we can see an example that we're using PSExec of Impacket to uh, get a remote shell on a remote machine using the built-in uh, credentials, sorry, using the credentials of the built-in admin user. Okay, so we're actually uh, being able to connect to that machine using those harvested local credentials. And as you can see on the wire, the entire authentication process was done using the local user. So I think there's a misconception as to how much damage local users can cause in the domain environment. People might think, well, the damage is limited to the boundaries of the individual domain machine, which we can see is not the case, and those credentials can be actually valid on all machines, and this is, can compromise the entire domain environment. So as you can see, still in many environments, 
pass the hash is actually possible using local credentials. So we need uh, to see what's going on with those as well. Let's see a short wrap up of what we've seen in case you missed any of those steps. So first of all, we, can, we saw how we can get admin privileges on the machine by brute forcing a, a local account. Then we saw how more credentials can be compromised and we extract all the password hashes of all local admins on the machine. Then attackers go ahead and try to figure out more machines in which they can use those credentials. And finally, using those credentials to remotely execute code on other domain machines. So again, we're going to see a, a demo of all this later on. But as you can see, those local credentials, it doesn't mean that they're, they're going to be used in each and every step, but they can be incorporated, incorporated into each and every one of them. And they're actually relevant to the entire lateral movement process of the attack. So uh, one of the questions that might come up is how common uh, are attacks using those local users? So this is a report by Praetorian, which is a pen testing company, which actually states that the identical passwords problem uh, is very common. A lot of environments, a lot of companies still have that built-in administrator account, so IT would be able to log on to it uh, at any time. You can just go ahead and ask your IT department if they have those, if they say, I can tell you that it's probably true. So uh, this makes the pass the hash attack possible using those local credentials. And as you can see, let's talk a bit about numbers. In 61% of internal pen tests, local credentials were used to, uh, to compromise the environment. So in most cases, those uh, credentials are being used as part of attacks. We already know that usually attackers are one step ahead of the defenders and not the other way around. So if defenders are using this, you can be pretty sure that attacker are, attackers are as well. Let's talk some more about what attackers can do using those local accounts. So one of the things they may do is to add a new local user and add them to a new to high privileged local groups. This is in order to get persistency on the machine. They leave it as a backdoor that they can use to connect to the machine at any given time in case the credentials that they currently hold are no longer valid. One more thing is for reverse hardening. So attackers would remove the privileges of other users to disrupt defenders. So let's see an example of this here on the screen. So we can add a new local user add it to uh, the local administrators group and actually remove the domain admins from that group. Let's see on the right what happens when a domain uh, admin logs onto the machine and tries to perform some high privilege operation. For example, here we're trying to remove the malicious user created by the attacker. So the domain admin would get an error of access is denied. This is since he's no longer an admin on this current machine. So the entire power of the domain admins on domain machines comes from the fact that they're a, a group member of the local administrators group. So once we remove that from, once we remove them from that group, they're basically uh, stripped from the powers and the lot of, not a lot they can do to undo uh, the damage done by the attackers. Again, is it really used in real attacks? So here we can see a few examples of a malware found on Azure, in which one of the things that it did was to add a few new local users. You can see them uh, in the bottom and add each and every one to the local administrator's account. So this is uh, something that actually happens in real malware. All right, so we've talked to you about how local accounts can compromise your environment and in which stages they, they can be used. And they can actually be used from uh, that initial phase where attackers uh, reach the first machine to the point they have the credentials of a domain admin. Let's see how we can defend those credentials, how we can uh, defend our network from such attacks. So first of all, we have to protect those accounts. So hardening is always the first solution. So Windows 10 actually offers a way to limit uh, the accounts that have the permissions to perform some our queries. So this is uh, to disrupt the uh, attackers from performing the admin reconnaissance phase. Then there are also some group policy to deny remote access using local credentials. This is to make a remote code execution not possible using those local accounts. 
However, this does not entirely solve the problem, since if attackers are able to connect to any other machine remotely, they can still escalate to admin privileges using local accounts. So this would still work. And there's, uh, so there are some solutions to manage passwords of local admin accounts, like Will presented in uh, his presentation, the local admin password solution by uh, Microsoft. So all of those solutions are good. However, we know that we already know that no matter how much time and money we spend into hardening the environment, advanced attackers are eventually going to be able to get in. So at this point, all we can do is detect them and monitor what uh, they did in our systems. However, there's a problem related to those uh, local accounts. There's a visibility problem. Since the accounts are local, the entire authentication process is obviously performed locally. Also, any changes in any high uh, group uh, memberships are also uh, stored locally. So if your environment has some network monitoring security device that relies on network traffic, it would not be able to detect any of those, and attackers would be able to bypass any detections that you have on domain uh, accounts. So this is exactly the reason we had uh, to develop a, a tool of self. We called it the local hero tool, which uh, provides us some visibility into what's going on with this local account in our environment. So what is this solution? Basically, we perform periodic scans of the entire domain machines to retrieve uh, a lot of uh, local information. So we get all the, users, all the local users from domain machines, all the attributes and information uh, that are stored about those users, and all the group memberships. So we do this uh, periodically. This allows us to discover uh, a lot of security issues regarding those accounts. So first of all, we can detect abnormal login patterns of local accounts. We can also detect any brute force attempt done uh, on those local uh, accounts. Obviously, we can detect all those machines with the door left wide open uh, that the guest account is enabled. Any privileged group modification when a suspicious user is added to a high privileged group or removed from it. And we can also detect any password configuration issues. We can actually detect when a local user has been cloned to a lot of domain machine. We're going to show a bit later how we can do that. And also it supplies forensic data for hunters as a timeline of what local users did uh, on all of the main machines. So what goes under the hood of this tool? First of all, we fetch all domain records from the domain controller using the LDAP protocol. Once we have uh, all of those machines, we can go ahead and remotely query each and every one of them for all its uh, information from the same database. So again, we get all the local users, all the information, and all the group memberships. We then load the data into a database and perform any analysis, analysis to uh, find any potential harmful activities using those users. So one of the advantages of this tool is that you do not need to install an agent on each and every domain machine. It's enough that you have some separate uh, uh, machine on the network whose all purpose would be to scan the environment, uh, save the results, and find any abnormalities uh, related to those users. So let's talk about some of the detections that we have using this tool. So we actually have two types of detections. One of, this, uh, one of them indicates uh, potential configuration issues that attackers uh, may abuse if they indeed get inside our network. And the second are actual malicious activities using those accounts. So let's talk about some of the, the detections we have. First of all, we can detect any dormant local user logons. We can see when a local user has never logged onto the machine, has suddenly, became, uh, has suddenly become active. So we can do this by analyzing the last logon attribute stored about the local user. Also, we can detect any brute force attempt on local users. So if we see that in one of the scans, the bad password count is set to zero or some other low number, and then we see that there were a lot of failed attempts to connect using, those local user, using this local user, we know that this might be a, a brute force attempt. Since we also monitor any changes in local group memberships, we can alert when a suspicious user is either added to one of the high privileged groups or removed. For example, if the domain admins are removed, we definitely want to alert on that. 
So very important, we can also detect the cases in which there are duplicate local user credentials on domain machines. This is the case where local users are shallow copied along with all the information to a lot of domain machines. So this is what we've seen in the beginning. This is the case that creates all those hidden uh, attack graph links. So how can we detect this? So if we have two domain machines that have the same local account, same account name, and exactly the same value for the password last set attribute, we, uh, we can uh, know with a very high probability that this is uh, indeed a cloned user. This is since this attribute is stored in a 64-bit resolution. So if this is exactly identical in two uh, different machines, this is probably not a coincidence, and the users have indeed been cloned. So this timestamp would be identical only if the users were copied. And uh, it's important to note that we cannot detect all the cases in which local admins have the same password, since we do not actually see the password. We're just running from on a credentials of a domain user. But this does allow us to detect all the cases in which they were duplicated on domain machines, thus having the same password. A few more trivial detections. Uh, the, the ones that uh, we have the group policy that can create local users, so we can get from uh, the sysfull share, since we have the permissions of a, a domain account, we can get all those local users defined by those group policies. For example, by using the GP password again by PowerSploit, great tool. And then we can just compare it to the results of our local hero scanner and al alert if those users when were, indeed found, were indeed found on domain machines. Last but not least, the enabled guest accounts, we can find all those machines with the door wide open for attackers to get in. So we've spoken very highly of this tool that can detect uh, the activities of local users in a domain environment. Let's see uh, a short demo of uh, its actual capabilities. So we have here um, a, an environment or four virtual machines. We have a domain controller. We have uh, two domain machines, client one and client two. The, the first is the one uh, that attackers initially infiltrate, and the second is the next target, next target of the attack. And also we have our scanner that periodically scans the environment to find any potential attacks using those local accounts. So now we're looking at things from the point of view of the attackers. We just compromise the domain machine, and we're trying to perform uh, some high privilege operations. For example, here we're trying to add a new local user to the machine. Well, access is denied. This user is not an admin on the machine. Well, let's go ahead and perform a query to see who are the admins on the machine. So we got the uh, domain admins and two local admin, admin accounts. So let's go ahead and try to brute force each and every one of those local administrative accounts. So I don't know if you can see this, but the attempt to brute force the local built-in administrator failed. However, we're successful in brute forcing the password of the local admin account. Okay, so we have the password here. We're going to use it at, uh, in a second. Before that, let's perform the reconnaissance phase and see who are the local admin of our next target, the client 2 machine. So again, this is done uh, by a command that from PowerSploit. Let's see who are admins on uh, our second machines. machine. So we have the domain admins again. We're usually much more secured. And again, we have the built-in administrator local account. So we have this account on this machine and on, uh, on the remote machine of client two. However, we were not able to brute force the password of this account. What we do have is the credentials of some other administrative account. So let's go ahead and log on to the machine using this account. All right, so at this stage, attackers are admins on this machine. They can now perform any operations, install any backdoors, get any information that they want. For example, here we'll do a few uh, activities related to local users. We would uh, enable the guest account, create a new local user in the machine as a backdoor, add it to the administrator's local group, and remove uh, the domain admins group so they would not be able to undo anything, uh, uh, any harm that we do on the machine. So next, next step, let's uh, use uh, the Mimikatz tool from our previous uh, talker to retrieve all the password hashes of any other local accounts on the system. 
All right, so the one we're targeting is the built-in administrator account. So since we know this is an admin on both the current machine and on the remote client to machine to which we want to connect. So let's go ahead and copy this one. And next, we're going to try to remotely execute code on that remote machine using the credentials we've just harvested. So hopefully, we're going to get a remote shell on the remote machine. So as you can see, this worked. And we were able, we're now connected to the remote machine when all we did was use the credentials of the local account. So as you can see, uh, the local accounts can be uh, just as dangerous as domain accounts. And pass the hash actually sometimes work, works using those accounts. So it's very unsafe to keep the same password of those local accounts on domain machines. So at this stage, attackers can go ahead and literally move through the network until they reach their end goal. So we finished looking at things from the point of view of the attackers. Let's see what goes on on the defensive side. So before the demo, I scanned the environment once using the tool. Now we've performed all this operation. Let's see what's going to happen when we uh, scan the environment once again to see if any changes were found with those local users and any potential attacks were made. So it would first retrieve all the computers and then scan each and every one of them remotely. Again, no agent on every machine, just a separate machine. All we need now is the date of the scan to enter to our database and see if the analyzer can find any potential harmful activities. So I know it's a bit uh, hard to read the output uh, right now, so let me just tell you what we see. So we, we've actually found cloned users on domain machines. We, can, we were able to find that the administrator has the same password on both client 2 and client 1 machines since he was duplicated from one machine to the other. This is what allowed us to perform that remote code execution using uh, that account. Also, we have found a brute force attempt on a local administrator account by analyzing the bad password count attribute. We have found changes in the administrator's local group. We have seen that a malicious user was added and the domain admins were removed. And we have a lot of other detections. I'm not going to get into them. The guest accounts, suspicious logins, dormant users. So we have a lot of detection based on those uh, periodic scans. And we can actually detect attackers that are using those local accounts and not allowing them to fly under the radar uh, uh, during their attack. So now Tal's going to leave you with uh, some final thoughts on the issue. So, yeah, definitely. So thank you, Demogod. Thank you, Marina. Uh, let's uh, get us all to lunch very quickly. So what we learn. So I hope you are by now convinced that local users and their hygiene is very relevant to your network because local users are relevant to all lateral movement phases, starting with the local privilege escalation, compromised credentials for, with Mimikat, admin reconnaissance with GetNet local group, and remote code execution using PASTEHAT PSXEC. And local user create hidden gra links in the attack graph. So if you are just looking and you're doing, for example, only doing a bloodhound, uh, you are missing. So if you're an attacker, you're missing opportunities. But if you're a defender, you're missing uh, hidden links. And attackers can jump from one machine to another in a way you were not expecting it. OK. so. But we didn't stop in that. We show you also solution and mitigation. We went, uh, we put a lot of focus on our local hero scanner. And we also show you some hardening with Samaritan tool, LAPS, and deny remote access for local users. And in fact, I think we have a little bit of time. So let's talk a little bit about uh, these tools. So uh, Samaritan, as uh, Will said earlier, it's, uh, this uh, feature is now available by default in uh, Sense Anniversary update of uh, uh, Windows 10. And for a previous version, just use the Samaritan tool written by ATA guy, Itai. And you can harden uh, the ability to query remotely over the Samar protocol for uh, local users and local groups and really disrupt attacker reconnaissance phase. 
You can use group policy to deny local user remote access. It's available since that famous uh, KB down below. And you can tell, uh, well, local user, you are local. I'm not, I'm not allowing you to be used in remote uh, scenarios. Only type it in in the console. That's the only use for you. And you can see that hardening really works. So if you apply that hardening, uh, attackers and other users will get access denied uh, either by RDP or uh, using some uh, uh, console tools. And labs, I think uh, it was really, really nicely covered by Will, so it really uh, changes uh, uh, the local administrator a password it generates them in a rather random way and uh, changes them every every month or so and store them uh, in the in the DC where it's a safer environment than a specific uh, machine. So this is great because there are no more identical passwords, no more guessable passwords afterwards. There are still configuration issues may arise as Will had shown. So. Just getting back, OK. Uh, so what do you need to do after this talk? So first, no panic. Each step in the target attack is just a link in the cyber attack kill chain. Find that easy link to discover and win as a defender. And so harden your environment and monitor both network and uh, local users. 